Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Matt Crick, and I want to welcome you to the University New Jersey Social Media Summit at William Patterson University. I co-chair the summit with my colleague, Dr. Angie Yu. This event would not happen if not for her tireless efforts, clear thinking, and sheer strength of will. Thank you, Angie. Our summit is sponsored by the MA in Professional Communication and the Department of Communication. This year is our second year for the summit. And fortunately, even in these challenging economic times, we were able to spring for fresh muffins and coffee. <laughs> the day's agenda is inside your welcome bags, and you'll see what we have planned. Restrooms are on the second floor and a Coke machine on the first floor in case our coffee doesn't meet your exacting standards. Today's presentations and activities are designed to bridge both the academic and practical worlds of social media as seen through the lens of higher education. This is new territory and it's exciting. For the most part, the public sees the face of social media as an app, a YouTube video, or push for pizza. If you don't know what push for pizza is, ask one of the students here today and I can't help you if you don't know what YouTube is. <laughs> this year we're streaming the summit live right now. So if you're trying to hide from someone, good luck. You can find the streaming video on our summit website, the main summit website. We're here to ask questions and challenge and contribute to the current wisdom about social media's impact and influence in higher education. We will tweet. You might be doing that now. It's okay, this is actually a place where we encourage you to use your mobile. I wanna thank several people, and if I forget someone, please forgive me for that. I'm sure someone will tweet about it if I do. Um, maybe you'll post it on MySpace. <laughs> I'm joking about MySpace, right? Thanks to Provost Warren Sandman, Dean Darrell Moore of the College of the Arts and Communication, and Interim Dean Associate, uh, Associate Dean Loretta McLaughlin Vignet. Thanks to all the staff in the Dean's office who helped make this event happen, in particular Amy Nemery. Thanks as well to Dr. Diana Peck, Dr. Clive O, Dr. Jennifer Allett, Professor Laura Brown, and uh, Al Clark, our TV studio manager, who helped uh, a lot in the website uh, design and making sure that we get, got the stream up along with uh, Tom Nemeth in, in uh, IT. I want to thank uh, Denise DeCoff as well and Broadcast Production Services, uh, Rod, Greg, Dante, um, everybody who's really worked hard to make the streaming part work and also go around uh, later on today and capture the spirit of the event. I'd like to introduce Provost Warren Sandman to bring greetings, followed by Dean Darrell Moore and Communication Department Chair Dr. Diana Peck. Have a great summit. We're happy you're here and enjoy the day. Dr. Crick uh, caught me in mid-tweet while I was out there at the table here. But uh, on behalf of William Patterson University and our president, Kathleen Waldron, I will welcome you here to uh, William Patterson. This is our second New Jersey Social Media Summit, as Dr. Crick noted. Not our last, our second. We, this is something we hope to continue to do. It is, as noted, sponsored by our communication department and our professional communication MA program here. It's an area of strength and emphasis at this university and in our communication program here that we look at social media, both from the academic side and also from the practical side. It's a nice mix, it's a great combination, and it's the strength of our programming here at William Patterson University. I'm the provost here at William Patterson University. I'm also proud to say that I am a faculty member in the Department of Communication. That's my academic background as well. And it's always pleasing to see what work is being done here by the students and by the faculty in our communication department here. This is going to be a fantastic opportunity this is going to be a great chance to learn more about how social media works in university settings and practical settings and business settings and to think a little bit more about the new theories and the new approaches to what social media is. 
just happily, I was about a week ago at the Eastern Communication Association convention on a panel talking about social media and privacy laws and thinking about the differences and how social media has so upended our modeling and our understanding of media theory today. So I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that as the day goes on as well. But on behalf of the university, welcome to this social media summit and thank you for coming to William Patterson. Good morning, everyone. Um, of course, I'm going to really echo the provost's uh, thanks. I echo them uh, to all the individuals he mentioned. Uh, I don't want to be redundant and repeat them. But I particularly want to acknowledge Dr. Crick and Dr. Yu because, you know, this really is their, uh, out from their uh, uh, many, many hours uh, of study and research and interest uh, in this phenomenon called social media. Um, we're very proud of them and what they've brought to the university in, in, in that regard. Uh, we're hoping that this is going to lead to uh, bigger and better things in terms of uh, the kind of research uh, in that particular area. Uh, you know, you think about social media today, um, you know, there's so many uh, uh, conduits for the delivery of it. Uh, what's it going to turn into? What's it going to become? Uh, from McLuhan, from the prophecies of McLuhan, uh, to the t to the Twitter sphere that we are we're all engaged in probably right now, you know uh, what does it really mean? What is the what are the true st strengths of it, and how is it really being utilized? So, those in uh, uh, those are the kinds of things I'm sure you're going to be discussing today. Uh, we've got some wonderful speakers headed by our keynote speaker, Dr. Uh, Freeberg, which we're, which we're so delighted that she's here with us along with uh, her colleague speakers. And uh, I just hope you take full advantage of this uh, uh, summit. As uh, uh, Dr. Salmon said, uh, this is our second annual. It is something that we continue, we will continue to grow and support uh, from the Department of Communications and the College of uh, Arts and Communication and of course the university. Again, thank you so much for participating with us. I'm Dean uh, Darrell Moore of the College of the Arts and Communication. I hope you have a great summit. Thank you. Uh, I'm Diana Peck, the chairperson of communication, and I mostly just want to welcome everyone here, confirm and uh, support the thanks to uh, Angie Yu and Matt Crick for their work, and also to thank um, Professor Laura Brown, who is the uh, head of our uh, professional communication program, our graduate program, who is also supporting the conference here. Uh, we have some of our graduate students here, and I would like to extend a particular welcome to them. And I would also like to thank Jacqueline at Antonacci, who is the uh, social media coordinator now uh, for the entire university. So uh, welcome, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day here, and thank you for coming. On behalf of the communication department, we're delighted that you're here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. As Dr. Creek mentioned, this summit isn't, would have been impossible without the hard work of many people. Um, thank you again for all your help and support. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this special day. I'm Angie Yu. I'm the associate professor in the communication department here at William Patterson University. Uh, this morning, I'm very excited to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Karen Freeberg. Dr. Freeberg is an assistant professor in strategic communication at the University of Louisville. She's a well-known social media professor. Her social media pedagogy practices have been featured in Forbes and USA Today college publication. She's also a research consultant in social media and crisis communication and has worked with several organizations and agencies. Dr. Freeberg has presented at the number of US international research conferences, and her research has been published in several book chapters in academic journals as well. Today, Dr. Freeberg will share her expertise and insight on social media, <coughs> excuse me, and higher education. It's a great honor to have her here with us this morning. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Freeberg. Wow. I 
am extremely, extremely, extremely honored to be here today at William Patterson University and in Wayne, New Jersey. Um, and definitely I appreciate the hard work and dedication that Angie and Matt have done to organize this great event and I'm really honored to be here. And so um, I'm gonna just load up my um, presentation here. Let's see, full screen. So, okay, awesome. So again, it's a wonderful, um, it's wonderful to be here. I'm really excited to talk about um, not only the research that I've done in social media and higher education, but also a topic that I'm very passionate about that has actually helped me um, establish my own personal brand as an assistant professor and an educator as well. So the topic of my presentation is Social Me Media Education 360, talking about research, teaching, personal branding, and social connectors. And so, as Matt said, um, tweeting is absolutely appropriate. So if you want to Instagram, Snap, I am totally cool with that, along with drinking coffee, of course. That's a major food group. Um, so I can be followed at um, Kay Freeberg, and I'll give you guys my contact information after the presentation as well across all social media platforms. Platforms. I love to continue this conversation talking a little bit more about the growing changes, the growing um, opportunities that are, you know, facing social media and higher education. And um, I also have a copy of um, the slides too, if anyone wants to cover it. So I'm, I'm pretty much an open book um, in, in this area. So what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about kind of the overall status, where is higher education and social media at right now? And what are some of the challenges and why should we look at it from a 360 degree perspective? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about some best practices and lessons that I've learned through research, through my own um, work as a professor. And I joke with people that I treat myself as a guinea pig and trying out new things. And so I wanna make sure that I share some of the things that I've learned and as well as my colleagues in this area. And then I have a couple of other resources as well that I always like you know, um, a presentation to end with some reading samples. So again, I'll make sure that these slides are available for you guys to download and take notes of. And so I definitely wanna make sure that I have time to open up for questions, comments, and continue this conversation moving forward. So I think that higher education and social media, I. Most of my work is in public relations and crisis communications and social media, and I have to admit that I kind of fell into um, social media research and higher education, but I did it with a cup of coffee and my stiletto heels. So at least I did it with style. And, but I think the science of teaching is the science of discovering and learning applied practices. That's what we do in higher education and public relations and communications. But I really think there's an opportunity for us in social media education to bridge the science and art. And it's really exciting to hear the William Patterson program balancing those perspectives. And I wish that more universities were able to do that. And so students who are here at William Patterson, you guys have a really awesome program. And I think that with social media education, it's not just what you've learned in the classroom, it's what you've learned from your peer mentors that are working in different departments at the university, as well as your community and who you're connected with as well. So. I think that this is really about using these mediums, these tools to accomplish your goals and objectives, whether you're going into practice, if you're going into education, exploring the, the different theories and communication that can be utilized in social media, um, and then also how to establish your brand at a higher education institution. So there's a lot of opportunities here, and it's still a relatively new area. So. When Angie asked me what my topic of my keynote was going to be to kind of cover the overarching theme of social media and higher education, I was like, okay, how would I approach this? And one of the things that I, it actually inspired me from a class talk that I gave with my students in my capstone class in social media, we talk a lot about understanding our customers, our audiences from a 360 degree perspective, understanding the journey that they are at for their re respective organization and client. And I had one of those kind of aha moments. If I had like the emoji for the light bulb, that would probably visualize it above my head. Um, I love emojis too, so I'm really excited to see that you guys have that over there. Um, but I realized at a minute, I'm like, well, okay, we're giving this great advice for our communication practices and public relations, but why aren't we taking that same approach for social media and higher education? 
And there's times where I think that we kind of work in silos, where we have the professors in one group, students in another, talking about social media and how it's utilized, sometimes with higher education professionals at a university. But we really need to get the complete picture of understanding where is higher education right now within social media. And it, we're in a day and age, um, I got interviewed um, before this um, keynote, where the future of social media is going to go. And it's like, well, there's a lot of possibilities. That's the million dollar question. And it's constantly changing and adapting. But I think there's a lot of growing expectations among all of us. And I think higher education has been in the news a lot in terms of how we're preparing our students, how we're raising funds, how we're establishing our personal brand. And there's a lot of opportunities here for collaborations on research, for partnerships with the community to engage and promote and help our students move forward in the field. So I think it's important for us to kind of look at it, the complete picture and not just in silos. And I think there's a lot of opportunities here for higher education in social media. It's an exciting time. There's a lot of challenges, but there's also a lot of opportunities. So I always kind of look at both sides of the coin. And so when you're looking at research, um, most, as I mentioned before, I've done a lot of research in social media education primarily looking at my research from both a theoretical standpoint, but also keep in mind, okay, how can I help the practice understand what are the best practices and tools and programs that are utilizing social media in the classroom? So I think um, there's a lot of opportunities to explore the different areas. And so some of the work that I've done has actually looked at different certification programs like Hootsuite University to see what are some of the learning objectives from students you know, taking this program, what are some things that they like? What are some things that they were surprised about from this um, implementation of this program? But then also reaching out to practitioners and saying, what are your expectations? What are some things that you're looking for for students? And there were definitely some common themes, but it was also kind of a fun project to collaborate with other professors with the same mindset. So it's also kind of important to kind of look at, too, what are the perceptions of the professor? How, what constitutes as a social media professor in terms of their personality characteristics um, in the classroom, online? How does online branding impact them? So there's a lot of really cool research that's been done. So what I try to do in my work is explore how can it contribute to the body of knowledge in social media pedagogy, but also think about, okay, how can this be applied? How could this be translated into best practices for social media and education? So there's a lot of opportunities and it's a dynamic field and we're gonna hear later on from Dr. Zhang who has done an extensive amount of work in social media pedagogy and her research. So she's definitely if someone, if you're interested in learning the best tri trips of teaching and research, she's definitely one to follow. So there's a couple of other things that I think, um, again, I'm a visual person. Um, I love kind of showing visuals, but I wanted to kind of share a couple of examples of different ways that different programs have utilized social media to kind of create this community and kind of brand themselves. One of my favorite professors is Matt Cushion. He's an assistant professor at Shepherd University, but he, he not only shares and is actively engaged in the community online, but he creates his own content. And that's one of the things I think social media allows us to do is we're able to share our own perspective, our own voice, and we're able to kind of share best practices. And I think learning from others like Matt has really kind of utilized um, a great community where we're able to take these best practices and try them out ourselves. So you're kind of building that relationship management across the board. I also have um, University of Tennessee's um, social media account as well. I, I'm going to be using a couple of examples also from Facebook, but there's a lot of different platforms that you can utilize here. But what they've done is they've created their own class account where they basically have this centralized community where they're able to network with different professionals, they're able to network and showcase um, their conversations with their universities online. But there's this level of transparency that comes forth. So you're able to see these conversations happen in real time. And for me, that kind of speaks volumes in terms of personal branding. If you're seeing people engaged in various conversations, it, it kind of motivates you saying, wow, I want to be part of that. I want to be inclusive and start that relationship. So I think but these are just a couple of examples of the importance of content creation, creating not only just original thoughts, but sharing your perspective, sharing knowledge to help build the body of knowledge accordingly and having a centralized community where people can go in one central location knowing that they're going to learn something they're going to engage with conversations and possibly f you know formulate these upcoming networks i think that's really cool 
Um, also, Facebook communities, and this is not just for classes, but also for universities. So we have a couple of university um, professionals here today, and I, I wanted to share a couple of examples. One is actually from my university, um, but also from another university, Nick Bowman um, from West Virginia University. He's a big Facebook advocate. I've tried to convince him to do more on, on Twitter. He's definitely doing more of that, um, but he has a closed, book, um, closed group on Facebook for his class. It's, um, WVU COM 335, but it's not only just with his students, but it's also with other faculty that they're able to contribute and help teach the class as well to engage with their students, which I think is pretty cool because I've been able to have some conversations with students about privacy, about crisis communications and social media, but they've talked a little bit about theory and practice. And so it's not just the students that are involved, but it's also invited professionals that are able to kind of formulate this community in a closed setting. Um, at the bottom is um, a screenshot from Jeff Rushton, our university. Um, who, Jeff Rushton is the director of digital media for the University of Louisville. And so he has a group where it's everyone that deals with social media from staff members, faculty, to university personnel. And so basically this is our, kind of our um, knowledge co-creation group where we talk about what's coming up. And so we talked a little bit about new ways to implement and create and share um, using Facebook live videos. And so we basically use this community to kind of say what's going on at our different departments. Here's what upcoming events we have, but also, hey, here's something that we need to check out. So again, about formulating different communities. And this could be applied both in classes and departments and even universities as well. So there's a lot of opportunities. There's also content creation. So Gia Pressgrove is another professor that does a lot of content creation, sharing content to share information, share knowledge with our students that's relevant for them. And I think just getting into that behavior of constantly learning on the go because social media is changing. It's gonna be different probably tomorrow than it is today, but it's really exciting. But I think one of the cool things too in terms of personal branding is the power of sharing your reactions and seeing the students react to the, um, the conversations and acknowledging, hey, this, made, this class made a difference, this program made a difference, and this is one of the things that I wanted to share with um, you all, with I, who will be talking to you all later today about social media pedagogy, because I, I, I saw this tweet basically saying that this one student was so thankful to have a wonderful and dedicated professor, and that's basically for personal branding. You're able to see that from a university standpoint, a program standpoint, but also practitioners who are able to say, wow, I wanna be part of that. I wanna see what makes this class special. And so you're able to see that student engagement and see the reactions that they have online in real time for social media. So I wanted to definitely give Dr. Zhang props for that because I think that is something that we definitely can utilize in higher education more because that kind of influences our personal identity, our branding, our co-creation and we're able to see in real time that we're making a difference. So we're breaking down the barriers of time and location. So, so higher education and recruiting and branding. And so one of the things that I think is really important in terms of higher education is the opportunities that you can create with branding. So for departments, for universities, a summit like this, we're able to basically showcase what we offer. So you're, you're going to be able to talk to various professionals about the different programs, the master's program and professional communication, but it's also an opportunity to personally brand the uh, department, college, and professionals. And so you're able to basically stand out on social media based on how, what you share, the stories you create, the opportunities that you're able to offer and have that ongoing conversation with um, different audiences. Fundraising, of course, is really big if, with social media. There's a lot of opportunities to raise funds, gain awareness about the different programs and opportunities. Creative storytelling, so I'm gonna give you guys a couple of examples of um, how some universities have really created stories that you probably would have seen naturally offline that really kind of extended the conversation and really kind of created that understanding of global experience across the board. So there's a couple of examples of really strong universities on social. I think Princeton, NYU, Michigan, SC. Um, I'm a little biased, I went to SC, fight on. Um, but um, I do have an example, University of Cincinnati and WVU, I think that they all have really good, strong social media presence as universities. And um, one of the things, I like diff these different programs for different reasons. One is, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Michigan um, and what they've done in terms of creating a culture online and branding for social media. But then I'm also gonna talk a little bit about SC. I like University of Cincinnati and WVU for their leadership and their presidents and how they're really embracing social media. And I think leadership does um, influence the social media culture at higher education. 
So um, again, I, I wanted to kind of share a couple of examples with you guys. University of Michigan, I think, is the leader in this area for not only necessarily innovation, but really creating a hub for higher education professionals to look at. Um, they basically were one of the first people to be on Snapchat for higher education. Nikki, who is the director of social media for UM, has really been active in sharing, here's what we're doing, here's what we've learned through the process, here's what was, went successful, but also, hey, here's what you know we learned from this experience that didn't go over so well. So they really are kind of the leaders in terms of the branding aspect. So they really come up, um, they have this hub where they talk about their strategy and guidelines for students, downloads, social directory. So they're really a template of really strong personal branding for a university. And as I mentioned with SC, um, they really have done a good job in terms of creating storytelling. And what, one of the things that I really like that they did, um, I definitely recommend looking at this um, campaign that they did for the USC admissions they had a hashtag saying, I got it into SC. So they actually captured people opening up their acceptance letters for SC. And as a university, that's always so empowering because they get you know, really excited. You get to see the emotion and you get to experience that. And I think that is something that allows us, everyone has you know, the opportunity to have acceptance letters. Everyone has the opportunity to get awards. But if you're able to capture that content, that kind of tells you the excitement, the story and their journey as someone part of the university. So I would recommend looking at both of these. And I do have a couple, um, again, resources at the end of the presentation for you guys um, to look at further. So again, I'm an open book, so I'll make sure to share these with you guys. Um, so in terms of personal branding, students, faculty, and staff, I know that's been a big um, question that I know a lot of my students get. How do I brand myself on social media? What are the rules? What are the go-to resources? What are things that professionals are looking for? And I think establish, you know, an online presence is absolutely key. This is goes for students, faculty, and departments, and staff. And definitely be your best spokesperson. And I tell other people, like, no one else is going to be your best person, best spokesperson rather than yourself. And um, it, some of my students are what, um, always questioning, okay, am I doing the right things? What if I say something? Like, I mean, it's going to be public and open. And so I try to share them my stories on how I got started um, when I was in high school and uh, as a track and field athlete and kind of my journey along this process. But I think also understand the nature of each social media platform, I think is really important. Um, every platform has a different personality and characteristic and community. So I think with Facebook, it's definitely a balance between personal and professional. You have Twitter, that's basically the meeting the people you want to engage with. Instagram is again, kind of sharing your point of view, what your thoughts are, what you're experiencing. And I think with Snapchat, Snapchat is one that I've had to kind of constantly learn um, as well. This past year, my students tell me I'm definitely not an artist with my dueling skills, so my, my younger sister is the artist. But I think it's about what you want it to be, being authentic, sharing your story, being true to yourself, and being creative and interactive. I think that's the most important. But I think the, the key thing is be human and not necessarily like a robot. And so I tell my students, yeah, if you connect with me on social media, I guarantee you there's gonna be a lot of social media talk and a lot of coffee, just a warning. So if you guys follow me on Twitter or on other social media platforms, warning taken. Um, so I think too, I mean, it, there's a, a, a big leap of faith that we have to do as educators, professionals in higher education, and even as students. It is scary. There's a lot of change and a lot of new. We're experiencing rapid change more in the, just the last couple of years than ever before. And so there is that leap of faith that we have to do and say, okay, I have no problem being the first. I have no problem being the explorer and essentially the guinea pig in dealing with social media. But you have to be confident in knowing what, where you stand. What are some things that you can do to utilize social media platforms to your best ability for your personal brand? And so I actually have an assignment that I give my students, but I've actually given it to other professionals and other practitioners to kind of audit yourself. Like, what am I doing well on Facebook? What am I doing well on Snapchat? How am I presenting myself? What are some things I need to work on? And just kind of doing that on a regular basis, I think is really important. And I think explorers are often most rewarded. I mean, they're rewarded for publicity, they're rewarded for recognition. And that was actually something that came around with one of the USA Today articles on my teaching was, being out there first, kind of saying, here's what I've done, here's what I'm sharing, and being able to formulate those conversations, that generates some publicity. So you do, like if you are willing to invest and take a leap forward and experiment, you usually are rewarded. And I tell my students, if, what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, okay, it doesn't work, you at least learn something, but what's the best thing that could happen? you establish yourself as a source that you're bringing up new opportunities. And sharing results too, and I'm, I'm a big advocate for this, especially in higher education, like to break down these silos, we have to share what we know and what we've learned through the process to build that community of co-learning 
because if we're making the same mistakes, someone else might need to learn, like we might be able to learn something from someone else to be able to share those communities because we're all on the same page and team essentially. And so I think that's really important. Um, we also have a lot of uncharted paths and there's a lot of you know paths out there that we really don't know what's going to happen with social media because social media today is going to be different from a few months from now um i think with classes recruitment branding all at the university system is changing the expectations that we're getting from practitioners and what school like what are some of the skills that are associated with different expectations is changing it's and that's the thing that I try to do in my research I always try to gauge with fellow practitioners what are some skills that you are seeing missing from students coming out of the workplace because I'm very concerned that I want to make sure that what I'm giving my students and others are most up-to-date and the big thing that they talk about in my research and I actually finished this project networking is key and I tell my students my Twitter like I have business cards they're in a nice little stack of display um, on my desk, but really my Rolodex is my social media. It's basically doing virtual introductions, networking, and establishing that community. And the key is, I think, who not, it's not only who you know or who knows you, but what can you teach them for the future? Like, what is your um, promise in terms of continually learning, growing, and extending the conversation further? Because social media is going to change. It's about the willingness to push yourself forward. And I think all of us in, um, in higher education can definitely utilize this, but it's an ongoing process. Um, I also think too, in higher education and social media, I get a lot of inquiries, especially from fellow colleagues that are concerned about what is good, what is um, right, you know, when it comes to social media, there's a lot of unspoken rules. And a lot of my students say, well, I can't be personal on social media because I'm, employers are going to look at what I have on social media. I can't have a personality, but I have to be strictly professional. And I think the rules are kind of changing. You can be human and professional online. You do want to showcase your personality, but you do have to be aware of what you show on social media is going to be for the public. Social media is not easy. And I've had a couple of conversations earlier before this talk, and it, it takes a lot of time and energy. You have to put forth the investment. So it's not necessarily free. And I think professionals, you know, even though we're seeing a lot of discussions about where higher education is right now in social media, professionals are waiting for the opportunities to collaborate with universities. They're waiting. They're kind of at the, you know, um, sideline saying, hey, we want to help. We want to be part of the classes. We want to be clients. We want to guest speak. And so it's about taking that initiative saying, hey, come on down. Let Come to our sessions. Come to an event like this. See what our students are working on. Come to the final presentation. So it, they're definitely kind of wanting to be part of this. And I think to be successful in social media is like training for the Olympics. And I, I have to, I tell my students that if they get kind of an idea of how this goes about, um, before, you know, I was um, a professor in um, college at Florida and USA, I was a track and field athlete. I was a shot putter. So I tell my students I used to throw things for a living. Never had any issues in the classroom after I said that. But I did, I had the opportunity to compete at the Olympic trials in 2004 in the shop, but I basically said, yeah, I didn't say one day, oh yeah, I'm going to train and go to the Olympics, you know, the day before the trials. There was a lot of training, there was a lot of things doing a little bit each day, so you kind of have that same mental capacity and just say, I'm going to do a little bit each day. But if you do that, it's going to pay off. And there's going to be days where you're going to be able to do a lot and accomplish. And then you, you have those days where it's like, okay, I did one thing. Cool. Awesome. And social media is definitely not a fad anymore. It's a real thing that's constantly dynamic. And it's definitely an essential gateway to higher education, branding, and the future. But there's also a lot of challenges here as well. And I'm always the kind of person that always looks at every platform, every tool, every opportunity, both from a positive angle and also like, okay, what are the challenges? It is extremely hard to keep up with the tools, even as someone that's doing research and teaching. Um, I always, I always use pop culture references in my classes. And one of the, um, one of the movies that I love, I love Pixar movies. I always use the Ratatouille movie example with the food critic Anton Ego. I always tell my students, yeah, I always get it from practitioners that you know, I get a room of practitioners that are basically like Anton Ego asking me, what does the professor have that's new for students that are coming out into the workplace? And so there is this heightened pressure. But I think everyone's on board, you know, and so everyone is kind of always trying to get um, ca caught up with the latest, greatest tools, and that's a, a struggle, definitely. And I'm still, you know, there's some things that I'm still constantly trying to keep up with as well. And I think there's a rise of FOMO, which is fear of missing out. You know, you're missing the opportunities. You feel like, okay, I'm behind on things. I always feel that way as a professor. 
But I also think there's something also rising called FOZA, which is fear of sharing online. Like there is those people that are like, I'm really not comfortable in pr pushing myself out there. So th this is kind of twofold. You're, you have people that are afraid of putting themselves online, like they don't know how to brand themselves, they are kind of concerned about using social media in the classroom. But then you also have the other side of f fear of sharing offline, where we're so invested in what we're doing online that we forget we're, we're having these face-to-face -face conversations. And so you want to make sure your brand is aligned in both of those. Competition is heated and just the time management. So there's just a lot of challenges that all of us have at our disposal. So it can be somewhat overwhelming, but there's so many opportunities here. And again, and I'm gonna be talking a little bit about some of the different ways, formulating new connections with students, recruitment, sharing your brand voices, selling stories online to reach new audiences that you might not necessarily have had a chance to do before and to be able to extend your community and to create new opportunities for your school, for your um, department and yourself as an individual, a higher education professional, student or a professor. And I tell students um, and professionals around me, I would not be here today, like uh, where I'm at without social media. If social media was not around, I would not be where I'm at. I owe a lot to being on Twitter, being on Snapchat, being on all of these different social media platforms to engage with professionals, formulate those relationships, and bring forth these opportunities across the board. And so the opportunities that I got who established Hootsuite at my universities at an early stage resulted from social media. Um, being able to work at General Motors this past summer as a fellow resulted from finding out about a program through social media. So there's a lot of different opportunities getting my students internships and jobs and future careers at Dallas Mavericks and Team USA, for the example, all resulted on social media. So the opportunities are endless. It's about kind of figuring out which ones are best for the organization. Um, I'm a big Seth Gogan um, fan, and I, I saw this quote, and it kind of, kind of summarizes kind of like what I think is really cool about what we do in higher education and social media, and it has a direct implication of what we do. And it's, our job is to connect to people, to interact with them in a way that leaves them better than we found them, more able to get where they'd like to go. And I think as this university in higher education, we need to think about that. What can we do to bring social media into the classroom, in our department, in our university, to tell our story and to you know, connect with people? And I think that's one of the things that I think is really inspiring when we're looking at the power of social media in higher education is the opportunities that are endless. So um, what I want to do now is kind of spend the last couple of minutes to talk about where to start. I mean, I talked all about this you know, these insights, challenges, opportunities. Okay, what do we do next? Where do we go forward? And so I'm gonna talk about some best practices, tips, I'm gonna provide some resources and we'll have some time for question and answer. So where to start, where to begin? Um, I think the first stop is one, engage in the conversations, but understand what's your overall goal as an institution, as a department, as an educator, as a student, what is your goal? Get an internship, recruit more students, tell your story, uh, get recognition possibly for your social media work in the classroom. What is your overall goal? And about, and once you figure out your goal, how do you engage with the conversations? And so one of the great things about being in social media high education is there's tons of opportunities to collaborate with others. Twitter chats um, are a couple ones. Hootsuite has one called Hootchat. There's several others that are related to higher education. I'm gonna be listing a couple of professionals in higher education that you might wanna look at. They're actively involved. And I think also just starting the conversation, connecting with people that you know to kind of build on that. It's gonna take some time to kind of build those communities and those conversations. Follow events like this. Um, we have the hashtag here for the New Jersey Social Media Summit, but if there's others in PR, communications, et cetera, that you wanna follow and engage with, definitely do that and be able to participate in that. Webinars are really good. And then also reach out to professionals in the field online. Invite them into your classes, invite them to see what you're doing in your department. And this is something that I've done Every semester before my social media class, I send out my syllabus to my fellow um, professionals and say, okay, what do you think? Would you be interested in participating? Would you be interested in you know, collaborating with us as part of a client? Or basically say, what do you think? Um, if you saw this syllabus, would you hire a student who said that they took this class? And so I always keep in mind what the practitioners and professionals want, as well as educators to kind of get their take and stuff. I'm always open to ideas, feedback, et cetera. So that's what I always try to do. Um, I think the big thing is being open to experiment and share your findings. I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't do. They don't experiment. They don't, because they don't want to say, okay, 
this didn't go over well. And I can tell you right now, like I tell my students, there have been some assignments and things that I've done on social media that were utter like failures, like beyond, like they were epic. But there were others that were completely awesome that you didn't expect to happen. I mean, one of them, um, and I'll share this in a minute, um, one of them, we were snowed in um, at the beginning of the semester. And I know in Kentucky, you guys are built to handle snow. In Kentucky, if we get like a little ounce of ice, we all freak out. And so for me, in the, as a Californian, ice, snow, no, don't do that. But we were snowed in and I actually had an opportunity to bring in former students of mine to the classroom. And I realized, okay, school's closed, it, we're snowed in. I still want to give my students the opportunity to connect with my current class. And one of my students, Nick, basically said, you know, Dr. Freeber, have you ever thought about doing a Snapchat virtual session where people could connect with us on Snapchat and ask us questions that way? And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Let's see how it goes. And I mean, I would never done anything like this before. I didn't know how it would go over. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna experiment, let's see. It worked out so well that people want like my students wanted to do it again and even the university was like well we had no idea you could use snapchat for so it kind of raised awareness you, you want to share that with other um, professors review what other professors departments have done michigan usc and some of the other schools look at what they've done um, share and brainstorm ideas both the good and bad um, experiences you've had and be able to test and evaluate like did this work did this not and so some of these assignments that I will share with you guys you can do even in your own department so it's not just limited into a classroom setting so that's something to keep in mind um, again this is more on the educator part pitch ideas to practitioners for assignments and research so I'm a big advocate of um, collaborating and bridging practice with research in my work I, I definitely love that aspect but I also try to do that with assignments so I always ask them what are they doing to test knowledge on social media for job interviews. Um, what are some assignments or things that I could do to kind of prepare my students in case they were faced with these kind of circumstances. So that actually resulted um, with an assignment I did this semester. I did a time social media um, assignment for my students to create um, Instagram visuals, um, Twitter, um, and a whole strategic brief in my social media class after hearing one of my students going through the interview process for a big brand and said, yeah, this is what they expected us to do in this particular session. So I definitely wanted to um, share that. Definitely network online for pitching ideas, um, sharing ideas, having a conversation. You don't want to basically start off with saying, okay, I need help in this or pitch ideas. You want to start that relationship first online before you go forward. Um, don't just tell professionals what you're doing, show them, be open to sharing your assignment syllabus. And that's what I do. And that's one of the things that I'll leave away with here too. I have a several links of several assignments. I'm an open book. So if there's anything that you guys are interested in, resources, I'd be more than happy to share what I've done. Um, but definitely show them what you're doing in the classroom because they're hearing a lot of things too about what's happening at higher education institutions um, for social media, preparing our students, et cetera. We need to show them, hey, we need to be our own best advocates and say, hey, we're going to take control of the narrative. We are doing some innovative things. Here's what we're doing. So let us show you what we're doing in terms of our students, our departments, and our university in terms of personal branding. And embrace the role as a social connector. So along with sharing ideas and perspectives and assignments, I think one of the other things that we need to do is share our connections, be able to virtually connect people. And I think that is something that a lot of people don't necessarily do, doing these virtual introductions. So if you have students, if you have interns, if you have colleagues saying, you know what, I really want to connect with so-and-so at this agency or so-and-so in this brand, could you virtually introduce that, me to them? And so basically doing that. Um, I think also writing book reviews. Um, I did this a few months ago actually for um, Gary Vaynerchuk um, for his new book and um, I, I definitely knew of Gary's view on education so I thought okay this will be a stretch so he wanted to you know ask people who would write a book review for him and I'm like okay I'm a professor in social media let's see how this goes and I reached out to him and he was able to send me a free book and I was able to do a review and when Gary shares stuff you definitely see your numbers go up which is kind of exciting um, but yeah you want to become your own media outlet share content ideas help others mentor others we're here to pay it forward we're in higher education we have to we're here to mentor cultivate grow collaborate and pay it forward to others and I think that's something that we really still need to do across the board um, the last thing that I have is grow your personal brand with confidence, success, and failures. As I mentioned, I tell my students I'm human. I make mistakes, but I, of course, blame it on the fact that I might have had decaf coffee instead of regular coffee, obviously. I know I've, I mentioned that a lot already in my keynote. I always try to do that in my um, presentations to my students. But 
Yeah, share your experiences. And so there was definitely some successes I've had. There were other assignments that literally crashed and burned on my part, but I share those. It's, and that's what we do as human. And definitely discuss lessons learned through trial and error. And so no one's perfect. We're all kind of experimenting around learning as we're going. But the point is, we're all human and we make mistakes on social media, but it's about sharing them and learning from them as well. And so my, I know just some of my colleagues are just so concerned with being perfect all the time on social, but you really have to say, you know what, things happen, you tweet from the wrong account, you might post something that you didn't realize, that it's like, oh, that's public. So, or, you know, you have these conversations, I mean, and you want to, it's how you react. And so this is kind of my crisis side, you know, coming through. It's like, you, there's things that happen and some of my students have come into my office with qu questions like, okay, I post this, what do I do? I'm like, hey, keep calm, carry on, all's well. And we always, you know, have coffee, so that solves everything. So it's about learning from experiences and being human. So, I, but I think, summary, the future of social media, of, uh, uh, future of social media education lies ahead. I mean, I think there's a lot of great opportunities. It's constantly growing. I'm really excited to see what er everyone talks about in their poster sessions, what research they've done, and um, the future presentations. But I think, that first and foremost, we can't have silos anymore in higher education. We have to learn, grow, collaborate together as a team. We're all a team here as a university. And so it's kind of like if um, we're in a, f a, a football team and the coach is doing one thing, the offense and defense or others and special teams, if we're all kind of not having a plan in place, it all doesn't work. We don't win. But if we all collaborate together, brainstorm, figure out what works, what are some skills, strengths that we can kind of showcase, we'll all w be winners together. It's a win-win situation. So. I think that's really important. Um, as I mentioned before, I have some resources. I know this is kind of um, small, but I will make sure to um, tweet this out. Um, but I have some resources here for higher education and social media. So if you're interested in how UN does it, other successes. Um, also, for those of you who are teaching um, or interested, I have my assignments listed up here. Um, I did a couple of assignments for Snapchat. I have the audit that I was talking about with my personal brand audit that students can do professors even um, higher education professionals i have that all of these are on my slide share um feel, feel free to down feel free to steal it's all good um i have an infographic assignment too i also do the one thing that i forgot to mention too is how you correspond with students i have a lot of professors that basically say well if you're using social media in the classroom or in your department do you have an etiquette policy we all have social media policies but do you have an etiquette one and so i actually tell students um, and colleagues like, yeah, you should have some sort of guidelines saying, okay, what's a good tweet? What's something that you, you know, they need to work on? So I have basically a social media policy um, there as well. Um, professors to follow. I have a couple here that you might want to look at, including um, a future speaker later this afternoon. Um, but these are people that kind of walk the walk, um, professors that really are engaging, and then also higher education professionals. So. Chris and Joel are really big in the higher education um, social media um, community, so they use the hashtag H-E-S-M. So they do webinars, they do chats, they are very active and very supportive of the higher education professional community. Kimberly Yu is at Hootsuite, big advocate for higher education and using their platform. Um, Nikki is the director of social media at uh, Michigan, so she is also someone to follow on Twitter. Ryan McGuire is the social media strategist at Princeton. So he also shares what they're doing in terms of social media as well. But I will make sure to share this slide with you guys as well. Um, and then I have a couple of other resources for personal branding here um, for you guys as well. You know, because I think that's all of us can kind of take away some personal branding for, as a professor, student, educator, et cetera. So there's a lot of different resources here. So I like sharing resources. And I, I also, it's good reading material, you know, for after the session. And so I will make sure. Um, this will be on my slide share, um, and then I'll make sure to tweet it out with the NJ uh, SMS 16 hashtag. So um, I promised that I would share with you my contact information. That's my email. I do have business cards, so I'm definitely, I have those if you want them. Uh, Twitter is also good. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, I'm pretty much on anything. I mean, even on Snapchat, so if you want to connect me there, that's cool. But I definitely want to make sure to um, open up for any questions or comments you guys have. So. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Any questions for Dr. If you could just repeat the question so we have yeah. it, mm -hmm. that'd be good. Yeah, I have a question. And uh, I have been following uh, uh, Dr. Faber for a while, and you are just amazing. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you can share with us about your time management. 
I feel I like somehow you have 48 hours a day. <laughs> right now, us have 24 hours, and you are so good at consistency and blogging. Yeah. And I know those things, but sometimes I just find it's quite hard. And this yeah. is also something I heard a lot from others. So if you yeah. can share with us, yeah, how you how I do, it. yes, yeah. how you manage all of those Always things, that would be like um, great. Yeah. One, lots of coffee. I have to admit, I run on coffee. Um, yeah, but that's definitely, I, that's kind of where the training as an Olympic athlete comes in for. So um, I did the shot put for 10 years. And so what I basically, after I finished, I realized, okay, what am I gonna do to fill in those points in time? So I actually, in my phone, have a scheduled time where I basically only allow myself 15 minute increments each time. So I actually start off the day after I've had coffee, of course, because if I do something before coffee, who knows what's going to happen. So I go and have a routine. So I actually look at what's happening in social media. So I use um, Flipboard Nuzzle. Um, Nuzzle is a good aggregator for news um, to connect with your Twitter and Facebook. Um, so if you're kind of like, okay, I only have maybe five minutes, what are some things that I can look at? It's a great mobile app. And so what I do is I look to see what's trending on social media, what's in my network, Snapchat, and so I start sharing articles to kind of keep myself about. But I limit myself to 15 minutes. I actually have an alarm that says, okay, Karen, you're done for you know this period of time. So I actually program things into my schedule. And I also use Hootlet, which is a Chrome extension from um, Hootsuite that basically I figure, okay, if I'm in class, but I know that I want to curate and share content, um, I schedule uh, things to share. But I also want to make sure that I'm still connected. Like if I have someone that like I like reaches out to me, I want to make sure, okay, I'm going to reach out to you. But it's about balance too. And so I never spend more than 15 minutes at a time on that. And so um, it, there, there are times where at different times of the semester is we're kind of ending up, it gets challenging, but I feel like I don't view it as work. And so I just view it as really exciting for me. And I figure it's like, I don't have to be on 24 seven, but it's about having that balance and kind of testing yourself like, okay, doing a little bit each day is cool. But then you want to have those times where you can kind of detox and say, okay, enough with social media, I'm good. So, I mean, even someone enthusiastic as myself, I have those, but um, yeah. So I think just scheduling time, figuring out what time works best for you. Um, I'm more of a morning person myself, so I don't go out and tweet at midnight or 2 a.m. So you just want to kind of figure out what is the best time for you, and it's about what works best for you in terms of your schedule. So, yeah. You're welcome. Yes. Do you, by the way, thank you for wonderful information. Do you believe that there's any, in your opinion, is there any downside as we increase the amount of social media and maybe it gives the students a lot of time to hide between the screen. Yeah. So, I mean, where, where do you draw that balance mm -hmm. in the one-on-one? -on -one? You're yeah. an exceptional speaker, but unfortunately most students are not and yeah. they kind of hide behind that as they also lose the ability to communicate yeah. in, in the mass form. That's a great question. So the question was, how do you get students to t be outside of their screen to not necessarily depend on just communicating on their screen? Um, I, I do this with my students because I tell them I'm a big enthusiast for um, using social media, but um, if they actually have to come and talk to me, they actually have to come and see me in person. If they send me an email, tweet, I'm like, okay, that's all fine and good, but I won't answer your question until you come to my office hours. So it's about initiating that behavior and kind of having that balance because it's kind of like what we talked a little bit about with fear of sh um, sharing on, like sharing offline. Basically, they build their brand so much that they can't physically replicate that in person. So what I've tried to do is say, okay, that's all fine. Let's build your personal brand, but we also want to make sure it's aligned with what you do offline as well. And so it's kind of just walking through the behavioral um, steps with the students saying, okay, here's how you communicate in person. How do you do that online? So we actually have those ongoing discussions, but it is a challenge. I mean, students are very comfortable in sending a text, but they're mm -hmm. petrified you know, at least from my experience of having a one-to-one -one conversation. And so actually for my social media class, I actually require the students to interview with me before they can register. So I actually want to see what they can do without typing on their phone and having plenty of time. I want to see their personal um, interactions and stuff. So I try to encourage that offline behavior as well. It's, it's tough, but I think it takes practice, you know, and so my students are getting better. So, but it's definitely a growing ch challenge for sure. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yes. When you share things, you take your 15 minutes in the morning and you tweet out articles or things for your students. Mm -hmm. Is your expectation that that's part of their coursework so that they should engage yeah. with that material? Yeah. Or is it, as you said, it's not part of work, it's just something that you want to get them used to doing? Yeah. 
Both, that's a great question. So basically when I'm sharing the content um, 15 minutes um, at a time, that's one of the things as a professor with my students, they kind of look at me and I'm about 10 years older than my students and they still, they, I've been called vintage. And I basically tell them vintage is, you know, in, you know. So they do basically, like what I've realized is in order for them to kind of embrace this behavior that I want them to do, I have to do it too. So I tell them everything that I do in class, um, whether it's tweeting, snapping, Insta, whatever, I'm doing it along with them. So I'm blogging along with them. They have a blogging assignment. I'm doing the strategic briefs. I'm doing campaign proposals along with them. So it's not only the content that I want them to see. So we have a class designated hashtag, but I also want them to see here's what you guys should be doing to kind of build your network. And then I share with them, okay, because I was doing this, sharing this content, that's how I got connections to these brands. Here's how I got this speaker to come to or speak to us. So I try to share them like, if they're doing some of these behaviors, here's the result that they can get. And so I tell them, I encourage them to experiment around in the class. And so some of them have been able to get those professional contacts. They've been able to network and talk to people in the industry that they want to because, and then they come back saying, wow, this actually worked, Dr. Friedberg. I'm like, yeah, that's why. I mean, I'm not doing it just because, but <laughs> there is a purpose. So, um, but it's also, I share contact too for the community and it's another way of personal branding. So I'm very active in the sports and social media community. So I also want to let them know, like, um, kind of with, they're getting the message from professors and higher education on where they're teaching, are they preparing students correctly for the workplace? And I share them, yes, we are, here's how. You know, we're keeping them updated, here's what we're doing. So it's, there's this level of transparency, so they're actually able to see virtually part of the class, and as a result, um, some of them have said, hey, if you ever have students who want internships or they want jobs, contact us, because we know that they're getting, you know, some really good practices. So it's been a kind of a win-win situation. It's a lot of work. I warn my students up front. Um, some of them um, get the big eyes at the beginning of the semester, but by the end, they're like, okay, I got this. So it's been fun to see, but you're welcome. Yes. Hi, uh, thank you for your presentation. My name is Maria Ivanovo. Um, I believe that people should separate their personal life from their business life. So would you agree that students and professionals um, should use um, or have two different accounts for each social media outlet they have? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question. I actually have a couple of students who do that right now. And so I don't force them like in this class that they have to use their personal Twitter handle. If they want to do something designated, like, okay, this is a Twitter account just for class, they're more than welcome to. I mean, I really feel that's important to have that conversation with students and for professionals, because if they feel like, yeah, I mean, I really want my Facebook to be just people that I know. And that's something where I talked a little bit earlier, like, where do you see yourself? Like, not everyone is going to have the same views on being completely open on Facebook versus others or um, on Twitter. But I think the big question that I tell students, like, yeah, you definitely want to, you know, see what is comfortable for you. If you want to separate your personal uh, and professional accounts, that's perfectly fine. But if you're interviewing or if you're doing something else, just kind of explain, like, okay, here's my account for, here's my professional account. And be prepared to have questions saying, well, why do you have separate accounts? And so it's about kind of anticipating some of those questions that could come up in the future and be able to say, yeah, this is why I'm doing it. And for me, like, I, I tell my students, I have a rule of thumb. I have no problem with them connecting with me, but I won't write a letter of recommendation on LinkedIn until after the class is done. So you just kind of want to look at, you know, your own policy and how you conduct yourselves on your platforms, what your rules are, and be, you know, upfront with people and say, this is why I'm doing it. So. But yeah, I'm pretty open with my students. I have some that have gone over aliases. I've had um, a student that's used an avatar from one of their favorite games because they're very concerned about their um, putting themselves out there. But um, I'm, I'm able to work with the students to kind of at least give them some exposure of the um, platform. So, but great question. Yes. What's a good way to like build your following? Let's say you want a business Twitter account. Uh -huh. like, what's a good, let's say you start fresh. Like how would you want people to follow you? Because that's, I think that's a very, that's a challenge. That's a very, yeah. Um, I would say in terms of building your following, I, I basically would start um, connecting to people that you would want to meet. Like if you have a local business, look to see if there's any professional organizations that you want to be a part of, like different programs. But then there's that balance of creating content. So if you have a small business and if you have any promotions or blog posts or updates that you want people to be aware of, start sharing those, but then look at um, what are, pe like in, if you're in a small business, um, are there particular hashtags you need to use to kind of get followings that way? But then also start curating content, sharing other people's content that you feel like, okay, if I'm a small fashion boutique firm, 
I might want to say, oh, wow, did you see this blog post from PR Couture that's talking about how to use social media for small boutique firms, you know? So it's about balancing curating and curating content, but then reaching out to people. You know, if there's people that you want to say, hey, I really like your content, have you checked out our store? It's about kind of having that authentic conversation. So it's going to take time, but um, if you're able to kind of, you know, do a little bit each day, it'll continually grow. You know, it's about kind of the investment in the relationship management. So, great question. Yeah. 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 Thanks for sharing your insight yeah. on the higher education and social media. Um, um, higher, I mean, social media for higher education is about engagement or mm -hmm. building community. That sounds great, but yeah. often practitioners need to deal with complaint from mm -hmm. the students. Mm -hmm. And if there's a crisis happening, people share. <coughs> yeah. Do you have so any suggestion or tips how practitioner can manage social media crisis? Yeah. So the question is, how do practitioners share crises, like insights on PR media crises? Yeah. Yeah. Another area, I give actually a crisis simulation for my students, which is always kind of interesting to kind of see how they react. But yeah, I, I think with every platform, that's the thing with every platform, you really want to think about, okay, here's all the positive things that could happen, but what are some things that could go wrong, like um, with Facebook, Twitter, and so you have to think about all the possible situations. And I think giving that, you know, those insights to students and allowing them to see case studies, I use case studies a lot, I have a couple of guest speakers and consultants saying, okay, here's a crisis that we just did. Um, last week we had um, a representative from General Motors talk about how there was an attack on one of their employees at a call center and how fast it escalated through the process. So, um, and that's kind of where social media, everyone thinks of it as a shiny new tool, but there's a lot of traditional best practices that we've done through communications, through theories, from PR practices that can be just easily tweaked to handle it. Like we know, okay, we need to have prepared statements, we need to monitor, we need to let people know, here's what we have, the statements. So it's about convincing you know, the students to say, okay, this is not necessarily just a shiny new tool, it's about how do you apply what we've already know into this particular medium and channel. So um, another really good book that I really have enjoyed reading is Jay Bear's Hug Your Haters, because there's a lot of online reviews. People can say a lot when they're behind the screen um, about reviews for professors, universities, programs, pretty much everything. Um, and then you can rate people now with um, the, app, the app People. Scary. Um, but it's about how do you handle that? How do you converse? And it's, again, how you react to the situation. If you have a negative comment, how do you respond to it? And how do you do it proactively? So if you want a good book on how to handle customer plays or haters, um, Jay Bear, Hug Your Haters is really good. Highly recommend. Question. Any others? Yeah. Another question. How would you say it's best to handle those students who have had in the past misuse social media? I mean, all the kids today know how to use it. Mm -hmm. A lot better than I can ever possibly understand it. Yeah. But they've misused it in regards to not really understanding the repercussions of a bad picture or a bad statement. Yeah. How do they correct that when they're moving on to higher education and on to an employment? In the real yeah. world, today, mm -hmm. everybody researches. Yeah. So, how, how do you handle that with this? Well, how do you correct the mistakes that they've made? Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's actually the assignment that I give the managing person, um, your own personal brand audit. Because I've had a few students that have been very honest saying, yeah, there were a few things that I did that I'm not proud of that are online, et cetera. And so um, I do share with them reports like from Career Builder and some of these others that basically say, okay, 50% of employers say, yeah, if they see something about an applicant um, that's negative to the brand, they're not going to hire them. But it depends on the company. I mean, there's some companies that say, hey, you're kids, we make mistakes, you know, as long as you move forward, we're good. But then there's others that say, no, under circumstances. So you, you, I share that information with the students that they really have to kind of be aware of that. But um, with the personal branding audit assignment that I give, um, and then um, I, I took an inspiration from another professional call. Uh, his name is Keith Cuisenberry. He has a social media strategy book that I think is one of the best out there. And he actually has an audit that I've kind of translated into this particular assignment where I actually have the students midway through the semester actually do a personal brand audit. Like they look at, I ask them, look at what you do on Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. What are pictures that come up? Do you do a Google search? Do you other, use other social media search engines? How would you rate yourself? So that's kind of where the eye-opening experience comes from with students. They look at like, oh my gosh, I've really been messing up, what do I do? So that's kind of where the second half of the semester we can say, okay, here's what you can do to kind of translate that. We need, you need to be aware that if you are going into employment and you're seeing some of these pictures coming up, that might be something that people might ask you about. It's about how you respond to that and say, yeah, here it is. 
but also how do you deal with that to kind of move forward. And so I do that assignment midway through the semester and it's eye opening for some of the students, but then they're able to say, okay, here's kind of what I need to do to kind of move forward from this. So um, it's been a, a fun assignment and one that I've been using for years, but yeah, there's been a few students that have had to really kind of take an, um, an honest look at what they've done and say, okay, I need to work on this, so. Yeah. Quick, and I love this book. When I just started teaching social media, I approached Karen and asked her to recommend a book, and she recommended that book. I love it. And my students do similar things for a social mm -hmm. media audit, mm -hmm. and really, like by the end of their audit, they will see clearly they are interested in this, and what they have been posting is this. Mm -hmm. So they will self adjust. Yeah, they will self adjust. Yeah. It's social media strategy. And Keith is, um, his last name is Cuisenberry, Q-U-E-N-N-E-B-E-R-Y. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he's a great, per he writes for Harvard Business Review. He's done a lot of really good stuff. So, but yeah, I can give you his contact information as well. He's awesome. So, cool. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you.